We've talked about what builds an amino acid, how they link together to make proteins. We talked about the side groups. We need to talk about now, after we talked about the structures, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. There's two major parts. One, the functions of them, what is it proteins are doing, and how do they hold together? How do they interact? Where do they go? So that'll stem from our first discussion. So in terms of proteins, there are many functions, but there tends to be a few general classes. Some proteins are structural. They're just there to take a certain shape, hold things together. Examples for this are things like collagen. It's basically designed to connect one cell to another. Um, it's a little elast elasticy, and so if you still have good collagen, when you kind of pinch your arm, your cell skin just stretches back into shape. It's got that flexibility. When you get older and your collagen is not working as well, it tends to take a while to resettle back to the original shape. And so there's plenty of other types of structural elements, um, spectrum and other things. But the idea is structural components just hold things in their shape. They're designed to help give you form. Um, other examples there would be like keratin for your hair or your nail. How you connect the keratins together determines whether you get the hollow tubes of our hair or whether you get the hardened fingernails. But they are structural elements. There's also transport. Well, if you have structures to hold things together, you also need to move things. So kind of the opposite side of it. Transport proteins are there to move molecules around. Sometimes they move neurochemicals and amino acids from one part of a cell to another. Sometimes they move fats through your bloodstream. Um, if you think about it, when you digest fat, it needs to get into your bloodstream so it can move throughout your body. But your bloodstream is mostly water, or the fat doesn't like to go into it. And so you'll have a protein that is designed to transport fats. Um, and so that's one example, but transport is an important one. Storage. Um, we don't think about it, but in milk, there's casein. Casein protein is just storage. It's a bunch of amino acids. It's designed so that Young creatures can consume it to get the amino acids that they need to then use to grow. And so it just stores amino acids. But you also have iron storing proteins that are designed to hold a bunch of irons until your body needs it. Um, when you regrow red blood cells, you need to use your iron, but you need a store of it around. Um, we don't store iron in our blood, I mean, in our bones like we do calciums and phosphates, so we need a different way to store it. Structural, transport, storage, there are catalysts. So those are just enzymes, and we'll have our own section about those. But, and some proteins' whole job is just to speed up certain reactions. And so they take a molecule, they can convert your sugars between types, or they can create you know, amylose or break it down. Basically, any conversion of a molecule your body need up, needs to do, the whole citric acid cycle and everything else, there's some catalyst enzyme in that helps it. And so it is a very effective, very effective catalyst. Enzymes are the most powerful catalysts that we know of. And so these are kind of large classes of protein functions. Hold stuff together, move stuff around, hold on to stuff till you need it later, help different things react. And then there's unbelievably complex amounts of them within each domain. But these are some of the ideas of what proteins do. There's an extra one that doesn't usually come up in lists. I like to add prion. A prion is a disease. So mad cow disease, bunge of bovine spongiform encephalitis. It's now believed that it is caused by a protein. 
that you have a protein that normally has some shape like this, and then by accident, uh, something happens and it takes a different shape. And the idea is it's called a misfold. Now your protein is supposed to twist up into a tertiary structure. It needs that shape to do what it needs to do, but if it gets, like, imagine Ikea furniture where you put some part upside down. When you get further along, you start trying to do stuff and you realize they don't line up, nothing fits. Normally, this is just bad, your body breaks it down a little bit later. This actually happens plenty. You try to make a protein, something goes slightly wrong, it just flails around, your body breaks it up later. A prion is one very rare particular type, and that is that every once in a while, the molecule that you make, the misfold, well normally it's just junk, it doesn't have the right shape to do anything, but if it just happens that it does actually do things, and most notably what it does is catalyze misfolding, well what happens is your good structure starts to turn into bad structure. And so you'll have a whole bunch of good stuff and one little bad one. But when they bump, it turns it into a bad one. And now you have the chances for more of them to bump. And so they'll hit other things, they go away, and you get more bad ones. And really quickly you run out of the protein you need. Well, your body is in equilibrium. If it notices it needs a protein and it doesn't have enough of it around, it generally will just make more. But what will happen is those will run into your misfold and get converted, and those will run into misfolds and get converted. And so your body will go, hmm, well that's odd, I need more. And so it will create more, and those will get misfolded as they run into stuff. And what will happen is your body will just keep creating more. And the result is you'll just get more and more and more misfold. Eventually, these pile up and they start to damage the cell. They'll start to stick to each other. They'll make these long needle-like structures, plaques, things like that. It's actually one of the thoughts for Alzheimer's might actually be one of the late stages. The plaques may come from misfolded proteins. We're still studying that one. But that is eventually these, if you have a cell, these little accumulations will burst the cell and then it will break open. The result of that is all the stuff inside pours out, the cell dies. While a neighboring cell, oops, it picks up a little bit of the bad material. And now those good materials start misfolding and the process repeats in the next cell and usually several cells got infected. It acts like a virus. It causes cell, the cell to replicate a ton of it. It turns it into the bad material. When the cell dies, it spreads to the nearby cells. And so what would happen to the cow's brain in mad cow disease is that you would have a, you know, you'd have a brain, but they found these holes bored through it. It was just holes that would trace through. It looked like a sponge. It was all filled with holes. Literally because that was the cells dying as it kept expanding and spreading out. And so while it doesn't usually come up for a lot of texts, proteins can also on very, very rare occasions be prions and be diseases. That's not a function we want, but it's now one that we're more and more realizing can occur. That cow disease quotes of Jacob disease, possibly linked to Alzheimer's, sorry, Alzheimer's. Um, just something for medical knowledge of amino, or amino acid chains.